Hey everybody, Josh from Silka here uh, today in my own kitchen uh, to show you guys how to hot melt wax your chains. Uh, now, I want to get started by saying uh, please don't tell my wife. And secondly, if you are my wife, um, look right there in the sidebar. I think there's some awesome cake decorating videos that you might want to look at instead of this one. Why are we in the kitchen today? Well, uh, we're here because we have ventilation. Uh, we're here because we have a stove uh, that we can do our in-bag hot melt. Uh, I've also got my Instant Pot set up, and then I have brought from the workshop my uh, ultrasonic cleaner, uh, just to really talk through kind of what this process is going to look like. So I think we can get start to finish on this one in probably 20-25 minutes. Um, and in the process of that, we are going to wax these two, uh, you know, my favorite, uh, Shimano Dura-Ace 11-speed chains. Uh, when we are done, you will have chain. That is essentially what, uh, you know, multiple Pro Tour teams are using. Uh, what Ronan McLaughlin used for his Everesting attempt. Uh, you know, these are super fast chains that are going to get you uh, a good 300 miles before needing to be re-waxed. And then, in a subsequent video, we're going to talk about the maintenance of that, whether you want to re-wax with the drip or come back to the hot melt. Uh, all said and done, you can expect somewhere between 15 and 20,000 miles uh, of life out of a chain that you are taking care of by this process. That is pretty amazing. And if you, it's a little bit of work up front, but if you really think about it, uh, over the course of you know a couple of years, you are going to save money on uh, cassettes because they don't wear out, chain rings because they don't wear out. You're not buying chain. Um, you know, really, you're probably going to have a drivetrain that lasts the life of the bike. Uh, I know I personally just sold a bike to a friend uh, that was 10 years old, had a repetitively waxed uh, chain on it, and the chain was still only showing uh, about 0.3% wear, which is under the threshold uh, of, of worn out, as they would say. Um, that's pretty impressive, and I think when you think of, you know, a cassette can be 300 plus dollars, uh, chain rings can be $300, and chains are not, uh, the fast ones are not cheap, somewhere between $75 and $150, depending on what you're buying. Um, this process can be well worth the money, uh, not to mention the whole time that you're riding wax chain, you are quieter and you are faster uh, because of it. So I think that's a pretty good deal. Uh, let's go ahead and dive in and look at the tools that we need to get started. Okay, so let's get started with the equipment uh, that we're going to need to both clean and then wax the chain. In this video, we are just waxing, but if you look below, uh, we have a link to our chain cleaning video where we show you the two methods we talk about here. So, to clean your chain properly, uh, we recommend really two methods. Uh, you can go the ultrasonic route if you've got one. Uh, again, in the video below, we've also got how to pick an ultrasonic cleaner. We've got our recommendation of the best ultrasonic cleaner on the market. Um, these things are fantastic. Or you can use my personal favorite method, the, uh, I always call it shake in a Gatorade bottle. I've actually found these Silka 16 ounce uh, secret wax containers are way better than a Gatorade bottle because they have these large open mouths. Um, you need three of these, maybe you want to use four, and I use, I label them one, two, and three. And basically it's a solvent, uh, citrus solvent one, solvent two, and then a super strong denatured alcohol bath. Um, and you will just shake the chain in each of these, um, finishing it in the alcohol, letting it dry, um, to get your chain fully, fully clean. And it, that cannot be overstated how important it is to have a incredibly clean, incredibly dry chain before you start hot melt waxing. Uh, and, and one of the reasons that this is especially important with the Silka, uh, the, the super secret chain blend, is because of the tungsten disulfide uh, that is in there. You know, we are specking 400 to 600 nanometer sized tungsten disulfide. Looks kind of like this uh, under an electron microscope. That is incredibly, incredibly small, and it's small enough to climb into the little nooks and crannies in the metal and actually modify the surface of the metal permanently, um, making it both lower friction and higher wear uh, or harder wearing um, against the metal-on-metal -metal, uh, friction element of that. And 
you know, this was normally the part of the video where you get to the uh, wear your safety goggles part. And I noticed uh, the other day in our shop when I was wearing safety goggles that if you heat a little tungsten disulfide on your fingers and you touch the safety goggle, it will not come off. And uh, we're going to go to the workshop here and show you a little video of how this works. And think about this is an optically clear, optically pure lens surface, and yet it has uh, uh, little nooks and crannies that are large enough to hold uh, the tungsten disulfide particles. So let's let's take a look at this video. It's pretty fascinating. All right, so you see here we've got our optically clear glasses. We're going to just touch off a little bit of this tungsten disulfide powder. You see it really does want to get everywhere. And as we rub it around, it is going to expose really all of the flaws in the, uh, the molding of the plastic. So let me just kind of rub it around here. And what we're going to see is that once it's in there, um, you can kind of now see it, no matter how much work we put into it, uh, it is not going to buff out. So that's uh, ooh, actually quite a bit worse than I would have expected. So let me go ahead and take the glove off. Now watch this as we take a, you know, a good microfiber cleaning cloth here and I'm gonna buff on this uh, quite a bit. And we're gonna see that even with that, the tungsten has locked itself into all the little nooks and crannies. Uh, there you go. And has given the glasses overall like quite a gray tint as we see it through through the white here. That is how fine uh, this tungsten disulfide powder is, that it can work its way into imperfections in an otherwise apparently perfectly clear surface. All right, so we're going to show two methods today uh, for using the hot melt wax, and those are the, uh, the Instant Pot here. You can also use a crock pot, but the Instant Pot really is the best crock pot uh, you can buy. And also the stove top method. So I've got two bags of wax. We've got the stove. We've got the Instant Pot. Um, why is the Instant Pot the best crock pot? Well, uh, we've got a little clip we'll show you here, time lapse. Uh, but essentially, an Instant Pot uh, has between four and six times the heating power of a crock pot. Uh, it also has this thick stainless steel internal pot that is much lighter and much faster heating than the stoneware crock of the crock pot. Um, but even more important than that, the Instant Pot uh, uses what's called a PID controller, and that actually allows the pot to control its level of heating power uh, exactly to the point of balancing the temperature that it desires. Uh, a crock pot behaves thermostatically. It's essentially it's fully on or it's fully off uh, in either the low or the medium or the high setting. Um, and so there's not a lot of control there. You're, you know, it's kind of like trying to heat a room by turning a light bulb off and on, right? You're either full heat or you're no heat at all. Um, with this guy, we can actually set a temperature that we want it to go to, and it'll go right there, and it will get there much faster uh, than in a crock pot. So here's a little time lapse that I shot showing just how much faster uh, we could heat four cups of water uh, in an Instant Pot versus a crock pot, and why I think that this guy here, the three-quart Instant Pot, I think they're 50 to $60, uh, and they go on crazy sale around the holidays. This guy is a heck of a value um, compared to a $30 crock pot, say, um, you know, that's going to take well over an hour to heat the wax. This guy might have the wax heated up somewhere in the, the 10, 15 minute range. Um, so let's look at Instant Pot versus Crock Pot and why Instant Pot wins out and has earned its place on the counter. And there we have it, 163 to 70. Um, super impressive. I'm going to go ahead and hit the cancel here, turn this guy off. Um, 
clearly the Instant Pot is crushing the crock pot uh, in terms of heating time. If you're hot melt waxing your chain, um, this is all the difference in the world. I gotta be honest, if you're making rice, um, this guy, because it also handles pressure, it'll, it'll cook rice in like eight minutes. Um, you can do dried beans in, in I think 20, 22 minutes in this instead of the 12 hours that it takes normally to soak. Um, if you're gonna invest in a uh, slow cooking device, uh, get an Instant Pot. Um, I gotta be honest, we had a Zojirushi uh, rice maker, very expensive, fancy rice maker. This does every bit as good a rice, um, maybe better in less space um, and less time. Uh, but I think the difference you see here is pretty clear. PID control uh, really allows this to think in terms of max power and then sneak up on that limit. This guy thinks thermostatically, and that means he thinks on and off. So he's either 200 watts or zero, 200 or zero, and then tries to bounce around a temperature based on that. Um, it's just not effective. And honestly, if you put 700 watts in him, uh, in here, he would be uh, a real fire risk. Uh, I think any of those of you who watched This Is Us, uh, like my wife did, know about that issue and are still really upset about it. Um, Instant Pot is just a much, much smarter machine. And here you go, you see, I mean, 180 to 73. No contest. If you are gonna hot melt wax uh, your chain, this is by far the way to go. Uh, all of this, uh, about eight minutes uh, to get to 180 degrees for three cups of water versus 73. That's why if you're out there hot melt waxing chains, using a crock pot of any sort or brand, uh, it takes about 50 minutes, 45 minutes to an hour to melt the wax. Here, you're gonna melt the wax in something on the order of seven to 10 minutes, uh, depending on how full it is. So there you have it, uh, the clear winner, 181 to 73, where it all settles out. Um, the other thing I gotta say about this is that the stainless liner lifts out uh, quite quickly and they sell them for about 29 bucks you can get other stainless liners so you could use it for multiple things I don't this is the home one this is the one we cook with we've got another one in the garage um, $59.95 it's hard to argue with right buy one of these put it in the garage if you're hot waxing uh, and hopefully that's all you need to know anyway thanks for watching we'll talk to you soon all right, so I've got my bag of the amazing Secret Chain Blend. Uh, you can, ooh, as I drop it, you can see uh, in the back 500 grams worth of these little pellets uh, packed, with, or, uh, packed with tungsten disulfide goodness. Uh, and we are now going to really just pour it straight into our Instant Pot and then use the crock pot setting on the Instant Pot. Uh, the wax is going to melt somewhere in the 140, 150 degree Fahrenheit range. And uh, we can just kind of pour it right in. Um, but it, it will catch fire at some temperature. Uh, paraffin is uh, you know, one of the basic uh, building blocks of a candle. Uh, so it will burn at a temperature over 200. You do not want to use you know, one of the super hot settings in here. Um, you know, I think these things support like air frying and some other, you know, you want to use the crock pot setting and you want to keep the temperature, uh, you know, well below that 170 degree mark, uh, really shoot for 150. Um, the other thing to be careful of, you see here, I've started my, my flame for uh, the stovetop application and you really want to keep the stuff away from the fire. So what I do here is you know, just go ahead and you, you want the water to be as deep as you can get it. Uh, for the, so you're covering as many as much of the pellets as you can get. That'll speed the melting time. Uh, and then you want to go ahead and put it in and let it just warm with the water, but you don't need or want to boil the water. Uh, think of this as more like you're poaching the bag. Uh, like a sous vide process, right? We're, we're going to that 150, 160 mark. We're not going all the way to uh, 212 or 100 degrees Celsius. For the rest of the world, uh, we're not going to full boiling with this. We are just poaching it uh, along uh, to get it melted. So I will take my other bag of Secret Chain Blend. I will open it. 
Uh, you did not want to uh, do it closed because, uh, you know, hot things expand. You don't want it expanding and then popping, puncturing the bag. And then I'm going to go ahead and just put my hot melt bag right in there. Um, like, here, let's get him. He's going to go on his side, apparently, because he's a bit buoyant. Uh, see if we can get him to stand. He will stand once the chain is in there, uh, I promise. And so this actually probably will speed his melting just a fraction. Uh, and yeah, so we'll get him going and then we will be ready to, uh, to dip the chains once we get the chain uh, fixtured up on our spoke. You knew there would be a spoke. I love spokes. All right, so here we are. We're less than 10 minutes into uh, heating these up. I throw my chains and uh, degrees are one, degrees are two. They're now in the alcohol three. I'll pull them here in just a second. Uh, but I just want to show you what we can do with uh, with this little spoke here. So the, the goal is going to be to have something to use as sort of a handle to dip the chain into the wax and then to get it back out again and then also to act as something to hold it while it dries. And instead of letting the chain be one long strand, uh, ideally what we want to do is have it kind of you know, run back and forth, kind of like it is in its package, right? So probably six links across, and that way maybe it hangs this far down and comes up over our spoke that many times. And that way we're not dealing with this long, kind of unwieldy thing. So I'm gonna take my spoke with, this was a J-Bend spoke. I've got a little hook here. Actually, uh, I can hook it uh, to hang over my Instant Pot here on this. Um, so I really just wanna make myself kind of a little, uh, J-bend at the bottom, kind of nice and smooth, little kick up at the end so I don't lose it when I'm swishing it around. Uh, and then really just bend this guy over at the top to make sort of a little handle for us. Uh, yeah, so basically we're turning him into a little G uh, sort of a shape that we can use to uh, easily go in and out uh, of the pot. Now with the bag, you want to be a little bit careful of this sharp end. Um, it might even make more sense to, with the bag, to use the, uh, the J-Bend or the hammerhead end, depending on what type of spoke you have, uh, so you're not risking with the bag. And then also, I'm realizing, you know, I, to make this video, I grabbed this as a short-filled bag uh, from our production. Uh, it only has 300 grams in it instead of 500, which is probably why it's floating. So I just put a couple of clippies on it um, to give it some weight to sit down in there. Now, amazingly, uh, here we are. Eight minutes, uh, eight minutes from the time I started my Instant Pot, I am melted. All 500 grams, I can see them in there churning. It's beautiful um, to look at. It's done and ready to go. We are probably a quarter of the way melted, maybe a third here. So I'm probably looking at another, you know, call it 15, uh, maybe 20 minutes. And that's only 300 grams of wax. Um, versus my 500 grams, which are fully ready to go uh, in eight minutes. So that's pretty, uh, it's pretty impressive. I love you, Instant Pot. And I gotta say, if you don't own one of these for your own cooking use, uh, you should. I, we got turned on to this thing about a year ago, and it makes rice in like 12 minutes, literally 12 minutes. Uh, you can throw dried beans in it and have them done in about 15 minutes from dried. Uh, no soaking, none of that nonsense. Um, you can kind of cook almost anything in it, and it does all of it really well. I was super skeptical. Uh, we got one for Christmas, and holy smoly, it uh, kind of an amazing little thing. The kids use it. My wife and I both use it. We make dog food in it sometimes for our, our stupid dogs that uh, eat a lot of rice. Highly recommended. We'll drop a link below so you can check it out. I mean, 60 bucks. It's $50, I think, at Christmas time, uh, the holiday season on sale. So worth it, so worth it. So I've got my chain here uh, laid out. I've got the outer plates all in a row here at the top because that is what's gonna be wide enough to take on my uh, little bit of spoke here. And so I am just going to uh, go ahead and fish it through. Uh, if I had a third hand or was smart and had a tripod, uh, that would make this a whole lot easier. But I'm gonna fish it through this way and that way we're only dealing with this much chain. Uh, you know, rather than having to try to deal with a big, long strand of it. And we will use this technique on both of our, uh, our Instant Pot melt wax and our bag wax. All right, here you go. You can see we're now 15 minutes later, uh, 15 minutes after we put the wax in, uh, in the Instant Pot. 
I have my chain that we just showed uh, kind of on its little spoke hook here. Um, you know, give it a little extra bend to uh, help keep it on. Uh, just that little extra bit. And what I'm going to do is really immerse it in and just kind of get it swishing around. You know, there's no benefit to it being in there for a longer period of time um, other than it gives the wax time to get in and push the air out. But to really get the air out and the wax in, uh, you need to agitate it, right? Which is why being able to do this, uh, some people, myself included, will actually melt the wax in an ultrasonic cleaner, drop the chain in, and then ultrasonically drive uh, the wax into the chain. Of course, that requires a separate ultrasonic cleaner and one that can handle these high temperatures, uh, which can get you know even more expensive compared to the $60 instant pot. So we are going to uh, drop these the chain in. Let's go all the way down. You see we have our nice handle kind of sticking out of the top. Uh, and then we are basically just going to get them in there and swish it around. Really let the kind of stir up the tungsten that's now going to want to sink to the bottom. Um, but also to really try and get the air out. And here I'm going to go ahead and film. You'll see the air is actually coming out due to, as it's expanding due to the heat. So what you're seeing now is the air expanding inside the chain as it heats uh, and wanting to really just driving itself out to the top. This will stop. We will get it swished and shaken around uh, here in a bit. And once you can see the tungsten kind of swirling around in there, And then once all of that stops, we'll let it sit for a bit longer. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. It'll start to cool and then we are going to pull it out actually as it begins to cool down. We wanna pull it uh, at as close a temperature as possible to the hardening point of the wax. Um, that's gonna let as much wax as possible stay in, right? If we pull it when the wax is at its hottest and its lowest viscosity, more of it's gonna run out. So you know, the goal here is to keep as much in as possible uh, as we pull it. So we're going to now kind of turn it off. Uh, let's go ahead and cancel it. Turn it off. We're going to let it sit. Uh, kind of keep an eye on it. This step usually takes five to ten minutes. And then as it starts to uh, uh, harden on the top, right, it'll harden top down, uh, we are going to want to kind of pull it and uh, we can hang it uh, so we can get whatever drips back in so we can use it for next time uh, and go from there. All right, well, if you're really, truly a little over the top like myself, um, you may already own one of these. If not, I seriously suggest you go and buy them. You can find them online. Uh, I'll put a link below. This one's Laser Grip. I think they all come from the same factory in China. They all look identical. Um, it's an infrared thermometer probe. I use it for cooking all the time. Uh, you know, it'll give you the temperature of something without uh, actually having to touch it. Uh, 94 degrees. Uh, the beauty of this is you can use it to get your wax to the perfect temperature. I was actually just peeking in here and we are 160 in the melted wax, but I still have a big iceberg of unmelted at 131. Uh, we're probably going to melt somewhere in the 140 range. So you can see how, again, the, the time uh, difference between the two methods, uh, this is all being done simultaneously in real time. And so I am basically done with the Instant Pot one here, and I am not yet even dipped on my stovetop version. But again, if you're not sure about whether you want to do wax long term, this is by far the cheapest, lowest barrier to entry uh, way to get there. Um, but I think after you do this a couple times, you're probably going to want to invest in an Instant Pot or a crock pot. So what I can do here now is watch my wax. I'm now at about 161 still. Um, watch it cool. Uh, the other thing I like about the Instant Pot is I've pulled it out. It's on the uh, granite countertop here, which is now pulling the heat out of it. So it's going to cool quicker. Uh, I can use my thermometer to watch the temperature as it cools, but also instead of agitating the chain in there, I can just sort of swirl around the little stainless bucket. It's now cool enough uh, on the top to touch it. Um, so I think all said and done, we are probably going to be about 15 minutes ahead uh, with this method compared to this method. Maybe, maybe as much as 20 or even 25 minutes. We'll see. I, 
I'd say we're probably at about a third of the wax unmelted. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Um, and in the meantime, we're going to get this guy pulled, give you a glimpse of what the finished product uh, should look like after it dries. And then we're going to be ready to put it on a bike. Hopefully, uh, before that time, we will have our chain in this method. Uh, so you can see kind of some tips and tricks around that. All right, so if you can see that, we're starting to get just a little bit of a film on the top. It's getting just a little, uh, it's going from that glassy, beautiful look uh, to this not so beautiful look. So this is telling us that it's getting to be time to, uh, you know, we can go ahead and pull it out. You can also see where the air bubbles um, forming there. Those aren't exactly air bubbles. Those are a little bit of air trapped in the wax and then they become a a little bubble of wax at the top. Uh, we can kind of stir them back in uh, with some agitation, but we are right down near 140 degrees uh, right now. If I pull my thermometer in, where, let's see, yeah, 142. And uh, the, the pull point really is gonna be somewhere in that high 130s to, uh, to 140, like maybe 138. So there you go. We are gonna go ahead and start to Agitate, or even a little bit kind of not stuck to the bottom, but we're down in that nice sludge of um, kind of clear a path here in the bubbles. And there you go. That's really what we're going to look like. We're going to hang in here for just a few seconds. Uh, and let it start to drip. But you see, we pulled it close enough that look at our drips, they're forming uh, little stalactites off of the bottom. That means we caught it really at pretty much just the right spot uh, to, to get the result that we need. And perfect timing uh, that we also are just now getting fully, uh, I can lay him on a towel here. Uh, we are also just now fully melted over here on our uh, secret chain blend in the bag. And so um, took took a while longer, you see where, uh, but we're getting there. So let's go ahead and get him inserted, or get, uh, get the chain inserted and we'll go from there. All right, so our instant pot chain is right here. It is done. Uh, and really in a few minutes, we'll be ready to go back on the bike. For those of you interested in this method, uh, we are turned off on the fire, we are fully melted. And this one's gonna be interesting and a little bit quicker. Um, because the bag doesn't have a big opening that's easy to kind of hang and drip over, what we're gonna do here is just dip our chain in. Uh, and really just pull the whole bag, uh, dry the bottom of the bag off, and take it to the garage where I'm gonna hang it in the garage. Uh, it, so it's kind of the same thing. Swish it around, shake it up in the bag, just make sure that you don't seal the bag during the process. Uh, and then we're gonna pull it and I'm gonna let it hang in the garage. And really, in the end, we will have the exact same result uh, from this method as we got from the Instant Pot method, just by a little bit different means. So let's go ahead and get the chain into our secret chain blend bag. Uh, and I'm just gonna come right out of the water with it. Uh, here I can take my clips off. It is now, as you can see, with a chain in it, it's plenty heavy. Uh, to to stay down, and that's actually one of the one of the tips I know our guy Travis uh, in the office. He will just drop the chain in, put the thing in the water, turn it on, and just let it kind of all melt and soak down. That works really well too. Um, just not necessarily for our video purposes. It's not as exciting. So I'm going to drain this bag, uh, get my chain all swished around, kind of in the bottom here, and then we are going to take it to the garage and pull it to dry. <laughs> 